my name is Nikki Muller. I live in the UK and my daughter Isla has fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva, FOP for short. Isla was my first child, an eight pound healthy baby. However, I noticed that she had bent big toes and it was noted um, at birth that she had congenital bunions. I was let out of hospital the next day and um, started my journey as a first time mother. I soon decided to have a look on the internet about what kind of treatment um, would be needed for her um, big toes that were bent. And um, I couldn't find anything, so I kept looking and I kept looking and eventually I saw some toes that were just like hers and this child had a condition called FOP. Um, after seeing uh, about FOP, I was incredibly scared and I made an appointment with my GP. The GP uh, told me I had postnatal depression. She'd never heard of such a disease and um, sent me on my way. My husband then contacted FOP Friends, the UK patient organisation, who were very helpful and gave us the contact for the FOP expert in the UK. On returning to the GP, I asked for a private referral to this person. We visited a few weeks later and he said that he probably, it probably wasn't FOP and he would take a blood test, but he didn't know how to take blood tests. Isla was only a little tiny baby at this point. So he sent us to our local hospital for which we had the blood test and we had to wait what felt like an entire, it just went on and on. And clearly I was obviously a very anxious um, mother at this point. And Isla started to develop the soft tissue swellings, which, which is another, another um, very clear um, sign of FOP. So she, it was on the back of her head and we returned to the local hospital. They said, oh no, it's nothing to do with FOP, that it's probably some kind of birthmark. They did scans, they had lots of people involved. And um, again, we were sent on our way. And then a few weeks later, I was three months old. I was at home, with my tiny baby, and I received a phone call from the FOP expert to say the blood tests had come back and she had FOP. My world fell apart and I had nowhere to go. I felt incredibly alone, exhausted and confused. Um, I felt to blame. Um, I, I had so many questions of which I didn't have answers. Unfortunate for Isla, her, the progression of the disease has been um, quite um, bad. And um, by three years old, she'd lost a lot of upper body, body mobility and um, yeah, that's continued to kind of get worse. Um, and she now has scoliosis, which is the biggest threat to her life. So um, the thing that I think has been the hardest has been the, the transitions through the, the healthcare. So, you know, obviously she was a baby. Um, I then wanted to get her into um, nursery and go back to work part time. Um, so making that transition um, and then obviously into school and making sure that she had the benefits that she needed um, and the right level of care. Um, I remember very early being told you need to become the medical expert. And that was the, the scariest thing anyone could have said to me because I'm not an expert. I was a new mum and I was trying to do the best for my child, but I didn't know what the best was. And with such a rare condition, it's very hard to know who to turn to. There was no one to turn to really. And um, I had to, to fight. And thankfully I am that kind of person. And I knocked on doors and uh, made sure that she got the appointment she needed. I, especially at the start, found it incredibly hard going to these appointments. No one's heard of FOP. No one can really tell me anything. I'm telling them and I have to repeat my story hundreds of times. I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I had to explain our story. And I, then I worry because I've got so much on my plate. Am I missing things? Have I said the right thing? Have I, you know, explained, is there, is there something that, that I should have done differently? So there's a lot of pressure on myself to manage that. Um, so it has been really challenging. Um, and I think the other thing is because FOP is a progressive condition. And as I say, her progression has been um, rapid. 
um, the grief and the heartache um, and the emotional side of that is very hard to bear. And um, yeah, trying to make the right choices is, um, is tricky. All that said, I feel incredibly fortunate and thankful that Isla was diagnosed so young, um, one of the youngest probably in the world. And um, we do have an incredible FOP community. We live in the UK where we get health care for free. And, um, you know, I get a lot of support from other families with the condition. And for those in less fortunate circumstances, it must be incredibly difficult. Mm -hmm.